my gosh, you guys, I just finished flipping this desk and I am so excited to show you how it turned out. I ended up having to do something that I've never done before because I had some complications with the desk, but it ended up turning out super awesome. And yeah, I cannot wait to show you guys how it turned out. So let's go. Hey everybody, Emily Miller here. Welcome to my channel, EA Furniture Flipping, where my motto is one man's trash can be another man's treasure if flipped. I love taking old furniture and giving it a new coat of paint, new hardware, fixing the problems so that someone else can enjoy it for many more years to come. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this video and what are we waiting for? Let's get started. <music> So the first thing I always do when flipping a piece of furniture is to take all the hardware off. This one ended up being slightly more of a challenge because it had flathead screws. If you've ever worked with flathead screws, the screwdriver just likes to keep popping off of it so it takes a little more concentration, but I see now why they invented Phillips head screwdrivers. The next thing I always do is clean the piece of furniture unless I have sanding to do. I do that first, but I did not have any on this piece. So I got to cleaning, which also included vacuuming because there was a lot of loose debris in here. Also, if you know what this writing on the bottom of this means, please comment and tell me because I have no clue and I'm honestly kind of curious. The next part is to clean it with disinfecting spray and a cloth or a paper towel. If the piece is extremely dirty, I will go over it with a paper towel first to get most of the excess off and then clean it really good with uh, the cloth, but this piece wasn't too bad, so I just cleaned it with the cloth. So cleaning this edge part took a little creativity because I was not about to get in and scrub every little crack and crevice with that cloth. So I got a kitchen brush and scrubbed it and it ended up working out really well because, well, look at all that dirt. So the next thing that I had to do was glue and fix this little piece that had broken here on the side. I just took some wood glue and put it in there and then pushed it together and then got a bungee cord strap thing and rigged it to keep it shut so it could dry. So 
so on this drawer the front of it was actually kind of coming off and I was going to glue it shut but I was afraid that wasn't really going to work so I ended up taking my little nails and nailing it together and it actually ended up working really well uh, yeah, and it's kind of hard to tell by this video, but I am pushing the front of the cabinet onto the sides of it by squeezing it with my legs. Um, yeah, that that was um, kind of painful, but uh, it worked, so you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So the next step is putting the new holes for the new hardware. I don't always do this, but when I do, this is when I do it. I measure how far apart the holes need to be, then measure on the piece of furniture where they need to be, mark them, drill the hole. For this piece, I actually ended up needing to sand down the front a little bit where the indentation from the old hardware was. And then after that, I take my wood filler and I go in and press it into the old holes as hard as I can until it's all the way filled up and then I leave it mounted up a little bit so I can sand it off exactly flat. Alright, so this is my nephew Zarin. Everybody say hi. I was told that I was supposed to leave all the video footage of him in the video so here it is, and you know, a nine-year-old boy's favorite thing to do is to tear things up, so he had to pretend to smash my phone with a hammer. Fun times. <laughs> and the next step is to move the things out to the driveway so that I can spray paint them. And I ended up going a different route with spray painting these, um drawers and I actually ended up really liking it so I just put them all together in a big clump and then took paper and tape and taped around the edges so that I could just spray them but only get the fronts and then it wouldn't just have splatter on the sides it actually ended up working pretty well and I will be doing this in the future So as always, we have gotten to the fun part, painting. So what I do is open up my paint can, stir it up, pour it in my spray paint container, and then I add water to make it thinner so it can spray out the gun better because if it's too thick, it won't come out right. And after you get that all mixed up, you are ready to go. Alright, and here we are officially getting to watch the transformation happen right before our eyes. I love this part, and this will never get old to me, I swear it will never get old. I did learn a few weeks ago to do one piece at a time, because it gets a little overwhelming, but if you do one piece at a time, it is amazing, and you get the to just enjoy watching the transformation happen and just really make sure it looks good and concentrate on that piece and I just until you've done it there's nothing like it it's so satisfying and one thing I did discover while cleaning that this side of the desk the wood is just cracked and coming apart so I'm going to show you later on in the video what I did to cover that up.
So now I got to come back and sand off the excess wood filler until it was completely flat. So this can take a little bit, but it's worth it to get the excess because you want it to be as flat as possible. I just kept sanding and running my hand over it until I basically couldn't feel it anymore. So now I am painting the front of the drawers green. This idea of clumping the drawers all together ended up working out really well. And then this one big drawer, um, I painted the part in between gray to match the rest of the desk. And I only got to film a little bit of that because my phone ran out of storage. So sorry, this is all you get to see of that. All right, so now I'm about to seal it. And with this, this is super fun because it is already very, very runny. So you have to do it extremely fast or you will get drips and runs and it is just a pain to fix that. So yeah, you just have to go really, really fast with this stuff. So for this piece, I am using polyurethane to seal it. I have been using polycrylic, which is a water-based sealer, but I like the oil-based better. I just feel like it's more durable. And now that it has all gotten a chance to dry really good, I get to put on the new hardware, and I absolutely love this part. I know the paint gives it a really good transformation, but I just feel like new hardware is like the icing on the cake of a flip. It just really takes it to that next level of looking awesome. And now to show you what I did to cover up that ugly cracked wood on that side. Well, I ended up getting this really cool pretty contact paper and just sticking it on the side and it fit in there almost perfectly and I think it looks absolutely amazing. I love this contact paper on this piece. Honestly, I don't think I could have been any more happier. I was scared it wasn't going to look good, and I ended up absolutely loving it. And then I cut up pieces to put on the insides of the bottom of the drawers because the bottom of a lot of these drawers looked horrible. And from past experiences of working with drawers and painting the insides and the sides of them or whatever, it doesn't always work the best because I've discovered they did not seal a lot of old furniture on the insides of the drawers and so when you paint it it just soaks in and whatever stains are on the inside soak through the paint and still show up so it's kind of pointless I've discovered so since the insides of these looked so bad I decided to go ahead and put the contact paper in there on the bottom and it really elevated it and made it look so cool and I am absolutely loving the way this turned out
Well, here we are at the end of the video and here is the final product. I am in love with this piece. Um, this is my only second time ordering this hardware or, or okay, ordering hardware from Etsy, which I finally figured out where these people were getting all this super cool hardware that I kept seeing everywhere and I was like, where are these people getting it? And I finally figured it out. It's Etsy. So most of my hardware will probably now be coming from Etsy. So this is what the drawers look like with the contact paper on the inside. And yeah, I love this piece. I know I say that after every single one that I do that it's my new favorite, but I really think every time I make a new one, it's my new favorite. And I like don't want to get rid of it. Honestly, it's so cute. I just like want to keep it, but I don't have anywhere to put it. So here it is in all its glory i hope you guys like it i thoroughly enjoyed making it and making this video i love showing you guys the process of how i do all this stuff so yeah thanks so much for watching and i hope i get to see you again in my next video